Hi guys, I don't really know how this video showed up in my recommendation list, but I have never really watched any kind of a debate with this uh, Kikachu guy. So I thought, okay, let me give this a shot. Now, the thing is, it's, it's a silly title and I'm not really sure of what this is actually about. It says the title is, is Islam True, but then Within the debate, they seem to have different subsections that somehow I am not aware of. Now, the video itself was uh, shown on the channel of Hakikachu, the Muslim skeptic or something, uh, which is a silly, silly name for his channel. And it, it, it was a silly title. So let, let me just jump right in because there, there's nothing in the beginning because the first 10 minutes or so, it's, it's Matt Ilhanti who starts laying out a reasonable, logical and rational foundation, just showing what he considers to be evidence, what he thinks is lacking in the evidence regarding gods. And then after 12 minutes, Sagikachu, somehow he changes the topic to evidence for God, where he says Islam is compelling. And he, he then throws out like this, this funny thing that Islam versus humanism, where he, he is saying Islam is wonderful and and humanism is terrible or something. It's a typical thing of emotional versus rational. He's just throwing out his emotions, his personal opinions, and has nothing to ground this on. And then he he just he just I don't know he he brings out intuitions where he says moral, religious, aesthetic, logical, mathematical intuitions are like evidence. Now, he, he brings out things which are known as system one and system two thinking, emotion versus uh, rational or intuition versus factual, but he doesn't understand what he's talking about. Now, he brings an example of Paul Bloom, but Paul Bloom rejects all notions of spirits, deities and afterlife. And what he really said is some recent findings suggest that two foundational aspects of religious belief, belief in mind-body dualism and belief in divine agents come naturally to young children. So in other words, if you indoctrinate a child, it's very easy for that child to take that explanation as a given. But if you do not do this. If you do not indoctrinate the child, it will not come to that conclusion on its own. And this I've demonstrated many, many times because I've, I've debunked this, this fitra, this idea that there's some sort of innate belief so many times. And I don't understand why people are still bringing this up and talking about experts. He says they don't discuss the development of religion because this is not a major concern of developmental psychologists. So Bloom totally rejects any kind of idea and Hakikachu says the opposite. So I don't quite understand why. And of course, children are in a phase where they suck up everything around them and are easily indoctrinated. But studies show through experimentation that only kids who grew up in a religious household tend to quickly resign to the supernatural instead of thinking, you know, thinking a problem through and then coming to a more rational um, explanation. So there is no tendency for kids to believe in something supernatural. It needs to be installed in their brains. And I've shown this so many times and you should be able to find this. So Hakikachu is simply lying as he fully understands that what he is saying is not true and simply tries to deceive others, which is the very definition of a lie. And after 16 minutes, Hakikachu actually found some material on intuitive versus analytical thinking, but he doesn't seem to be able to fully grasp and process this information or he deliberately distorts the results to somehow match his emotional and highly immoral attitude. If there is no evidence of gods or goddesses, why should this be reductionist or in any way negative to acknowledge this and move on? 
Gods are simply the personal opinion of an individual. That's why there are so many different gods. That's all there is to it. The inherent problem here is the intellectual deficit that is so obvious when looking at the outset of the claimed conclusion. There is no match or correlation or any kind of connection. Why does it follow that there is any sense of legitimacy to Islam if my aesthetic intuitions are flawed? The premises simply don't result in the conclusion. It's preposterous. And the next huge mistake by Hakikachu is his inability to grasp what an atheist thinks and makes wild assumptions wrong assumptions. He should spend more time listening than talking. I would strongly suggest he actually looks at the topic instead of spewing this nonsense based on confirmation bias and shallow one-sided thinking by reading Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow by Kahneman in order to understand the issue. And as it stands, he clearly has no clue what he is talking about. He's heard something, picked something up and repeats it without understanding it and it shows. It's embarrassing. But no doubt the Muslims, who are desperate for confirmation of their belief, will applaud loudly without any further contemplation or, God forbid, critical assessment. Because as soon as you question this, I mean, anything that Hakikachu says will just simply fall apart. At the 18 minute mark, and then this, this actually gets absurd. It's now beyond childish and borders on the farcical based on his false understanding that resulting in false premises, he jumps to even more false conclusions and assertions. They don't show Matya, but I would be laughing out loud by now. This is really ridiculous. It's not worthy of the title debate. It's like an, you know, like an old movie, a slapstick movie where, you know, throwing pies at each other is deemed hilarious. This is the level of, of this monologue by now by Hakikachu. Well, then after 22 minutes, there's an open dialogue. And it's a, it's a pity Hakikachu has not been able to provide chapters and timestamps on this video, which was then provided by a viewer later. But Hakikachu doesn't seem to understand how to do that. Maybe YouTube is too colonial for him because everything for him is colonial. Okay, Matt immediately puts Hakikachu to task, noticing exactly what I said. The change in topic, non sequiturs, because none of what Hakikachu said showed any evidence for anything. And this did not show any veracity in Islam. Fail. Oh boy. What on earth is an atheistic epistemology? I don't know, this word epistemology gets thrown around a lot and it seems people don't understand what this is. It seems that Muslim has picked up some words, but doesn't quite, you know, know how to utilize them. This is gibberish what he's saying. And on top of that, he says he questions standards, but fails to show that anything he says applies to the specific God of Islam or the ideology itself. So what is his point? And then after 26 minutes, the entire topic changes to is there evidence for God? Well, obviously not. So this is not a question at all. This is not something we should still be asking in the 21st century. We should look at and scrutinize whether Islam belongs in the 21st century in its current form. We should investigate what does Islam provide to a person today here in this life. And it gets quite obvious at this stage that Matt is pissed off and quite rightly so. I've, I've had the same thing happen to me with an equally dishonest Muslim, Ken, Kenneth Boma, who also did this tap dance in a debate with me. So I can understand Matt's frustration at somebody constantly changing everything and then talking <laughs> to complete nonsense. And Akikachu now pisses everyone off with nonsensical questions and a gigantic display of ignorance. He really should not be here because he is totally lost. 
empirical evidence exists and is used to support theories in natural and social sciences. So, logics and the laws of logic are evidence in themselves. So, asking for evidence, for logical evidence, is silly. It, it's impossible that there's something exists and at the same time does not exist. And that is the evidence, you fool. It's like asking for evidence that this is evidence when something is the evidence, i.e. it comports with reality. It's, come on, it's easy. But at this stage, Huck simply asserts and poses claims, unsubstantiated claims, I might add. I mean, it's sheer emotions here, no facts at all. It's childish. And Matt quite rightly asks what he is supposed to do. I don't know what to do. And Huck is cornered now. He's totally immobilized and, and needs to lie to get out of this. So that's what he does. He boldly claims that intuition is evidence. I mean, for him at least. And that a religion ensures that people are not harmed without a reason. Excuse me? He forgets that women exist, children, slaves, entire civilizations. They were harmed, even wiped out in the name of a god, a religion, Islam. I am left shaking my head at so much immorality, so much dishonesty, and so little empathy towards other human beings. Akikachu complains he is being interrupted, when in reality he is the one constantly speaking over Matt. He is so desperate and totally out of his depth. What is telling is that in his description of the video, he never even mentions the contents of the debate, but only Matt's behavior, which I take as a reaction to a nonsensical, irrational and pretty useless colloquator. Hakikachu, instead of even trying to provide evidence for his or any god for that matter, only attacks the person, the atheist, assigning false attributes to the group as a whole, because he doesn't understand what an atheist is and he's just simply never bothered to ask. I started biting my keyboard in frustration at some stage and admired Matt for staying calm. I would have lost my temper long ago. Matt tries over and over, again and again, to bring things down to a discussion about the topic, and constantly asks for evidence that was promised earlier, only to have some other weird assertion come up, again and again. And at some stage this gets annoying. After 45 minutes I lost interest. Since Akikachu is he's simply incapable of understanding logics, of understanding evidence, and of understanding what intuition is, and what these things are not. You simply can't claim that thinking about something makes it real. And that is what Akikachu is doing. An intuition, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, is an ability to understand or know something immediately based on your feelings. Merriam-Webster says it's the power or faculty of attempting to direct knowledge or cognition without evident rational thought. Dictionary.com defines it as independent of any reasoning process. Is that so difficult? So intuition is fine. It just requires empirical verification if you want to be sure, if you care about the truth and accept the reality. No, Kekachu doesn't. He just wants his imaginary regard whether this is true or not. Okay, it descends even further and, and Hakikachu does not present any evidence and, I mean, come on, he's failed here miserably. There, there's no two ways about it. What, what worries me is that A, Hakikachu claims he was educated in the US and this means the US education system has failed and B, that he lives not in an Islamic state somewhere, but in the US, a secular democracy, which he rejects. He also has very limited knowledge about Islam itself, stating that the doctrine that 
it, it, he says simply, he asserts that it, it can be traced to a guy called Muhammad, which is silly, and that the text has not changed, which is demonstrably false. Islam, come on, is, is a cocktail of legends and myths, of languages and rituals based in Christianity and is def definitely an Abbasid religion with an Abbasid Quran, an Abbasid Muhammad and an Abbasid Mecca. But that is why Islam apologists don't debate people who know Islam. Because Islam is hardly unique and is extremely unconvincing in its current violent and divisive form, it does not belong in the 21st century at all and under no circumstances. That's why it's imploding and disappearing so fast. At this stage, all Hakikachu has is Islam and that it sells comfort. But is Islam true? Can an object be true at all? Is this possible? I think it should rather be, is there anything in Islam that is true? And the answer is almost nothing. Okay, look, it's it's a three hour plus whatever debate and, and the rest is a lot of repeats. So I'll stop here. Y yes, I did watch it to the end and yes, I cried a bit and uh, but I made it. It would be really easy to debunk all the claims and, and even the mistakes that Matt makes due to his lack of knowledge regarding Islam as an ideology. But I'm getting bored here. Okay, one last thing. The description of a pleasure machine <laughs> made me laugh as it describes Islam. A waste of time and energy just for your own personal pleasure of going to heaven. That's all it is. Unless, of course, if you're a woman or a slave, then everything changes. Welcome to Islam. Okay, Hakikachu has a meltdown and shows his immoral views after a while. He thinks slavery is acceptable and that having sex with a nine-year-old is perfectly fine, which he has said in previous videos. Every Muslim today should try and shut this guy up because he really brings out the worst in Islam and is an embarrassment for the whole and entire ideology. And he's, come on, let's face it, he's on the maturity level of a child and should not be taken seriously. And that's it for today and for this video. Ciao for now.